Wow, that was something. And it's too bad that we actually have to go through two games. Definitely want to touch on the second one, the one that, that just finished. And it just goes to show what this team is capable of. Again, they have had many games this year where they play a near perfect game. If you want to nitpick, it's really their inability, I think, in close games and kind of finding their way to get as many points as they can. But again, it's not so much about making the playoffs. For them, it really is just about the progression and the maturation of the team. And, you know, there's definitely signs of growth. You know, we'll definitely get more into the second game. Just so much, you know, randomness when it comes to the season with COVID. So first off, Rangers play the Flyers Monday night. And this is the Flyers' first trip to the Garden this year. They had split the first two games in Philadelphia. And the Rangers were coming off a good win uh, against Boston. And Philly has not really been playing well, so you'd expect them to kind of pick up their play. And they did on Monday. And the Rangers learned that Pavel Buchnevich and Adam Fox would be out due to COVID protocols. So they would be out for that game. Phil DiGiuseppe as well. D. Giuseppe remains on the COVID list, probably signals that he probably tested positive. Again, D. Giuseppe, you know, you wish the best for him, is more of a depth piece, uh, you know, someone who would be in and out of the lineup, and you definitely feel the loss of Fox and Buchnevich. So the goalie matchup was Keith Kincaid coming off his shutout. Again, wasn't tested much, and against Carter Hart. And the first period, all flyers. Definitely all flyers, and with goals from Van Riemsdyk and Provorov. And it looked like there was a chance that this could be a blowout. It definitely did. And just kind of that inconsistent play rearing its ugly head again. But the Rangers would play a very good second period, extremely well. And it was the first time this year where they actually kind of had that comeback ability. And again, and it was early at that point, but they actually not only tied it up, but they took the lead. So they would get goals from Panarin, Blackwell, and Julian Gauthier. And real and Panarin's got three points, a goal and two assists in those goals. Just Panarin is just something else. One of the best players in the National Hockey League. He is third in the league in points per game behind McDavid and Dreisaitl. It really is incredible what he does. Just when you consider, too, like, he's not playing on a line with superstars. And I'll give Ryan Strom credit. He continues to play very good hockey, even without Panarin. He definitely has been very solid. After a rough first couple of weeks, he's really been good. But still, again, he's not... What he's doing is just remarkable. And we've seen a lot of times over the years, players come to New York and kind of fizzle under the pressure, and it just they you know, kind of peak before the Rangers with Panarin. He's playing his best hockey as a Ranger after playing very well with the Blackhawks and the Blue Jackets. So it's incredible for him. And so... Yeah, the Rangers take a 3-2 lead, and Julian Gauthier scores the third goal. After Blackwell scores the second, Blackwell continues to produce. He, he's playing on a line with Panarin and Strom, so you know, you're going to get your opportunities. But Gauthier scores a beautiful goal to make it 3-2. But Gauthier has had a propensity for taking penalties, a lot of stick penalties, and he would take a couple of costly ones, a high-sticking penalty towards the end of the second, and the Flyers would score. Farabee to tie to three. Then in the third, the Rangers would take the lead. Fourth line gets a goal, Kevin Rooney. And again, Rooney has been productive. He's been someone that, you know, I don't think the coaching staff is one is going to want to take out of, the, out of the lineup. And so the fourth line gets a goal, makes a 4-3. But again, Gauthier takes a high sticking penalty, a double minor. And they actually didn't call it originally. It was the right call, but it was weird. The play kept on going. And eventually he got a four-minute penalty. The Claude Giroux would score. To tie it up. So, again, a situation where Gauthier, a lot of good, but then a lot of bad. And he just, he needs to clean that up. And through all this, you know, Keith Kincaid, not the best game to that point for Kincaid. Some goals, he really couldn't stop. Some of them were stoppable. You know, the Provorov one definitely comes to mind. And, you know, maybe one of the other ones. But then... It seemed like the Flyers took a 5-4 lead late in the third. Kevin Hayes, former Ranger, scores to make it 5-4. But David Quinn would challenge, and it would be ruled offside. It was the right call. 
And so the Rangers would get a point. The game would go to overtime. The Rangers controlled possession for most of the overtime. But Kincaid, after almost messing up before that, tries to kind of get a pass to Panarin in the neutral zone. Doesn't get enough wood on it. Voracek intercepts it, and he goes in all alone on the breakaway, and he makes a little move. Kincaid bites, and Voracek easily scores. So Flyers win 5-4 in the shootout. So, you know, could have been worse. You know, no Buchnevich, no Fox. Really key injuries. Ups and downs within the game. Um, you know, so they've certainly played worse than that. But, you know, I, I think Kincaid did not play particularly well. You know, a lot of good from Panarin. And you could certainly argue that Panarin was a lot of ways responsible for the Rangers getting that point. You know, I guess disappointing that they weren't able to protect that lead a couple of times and costly penalties. And so that was that game. The second game of this back-to-back against the Flyers, wow. So we learn that Buchnevich and Fox are back. So must have, I'm not sure how that works exactly. It was either it must have been a false positive or maybe it was more just contact tracing. They're back in there. But the whole entire coaching staff is out. The entire coaching staff. So David Quinn, Jacques Martin, David Oliver, all out. So they have to use the Hartford coaching staff. Chris Knobloch, the head coach of the Wolfpack, would be the head coach. Gordon Murphy, who is the associate coach in Hartford. And then also Chris Drury, who... He his his title is, um, I guess, associate general manager or assistant general manager. It changed recently, and he had been in charge of the Wolfpack. I don't know if that's still part of his duties, but it made sense. So, Drury behind the bench, Chris Knobloch, and, and No Quinn. And the first thing I think of is, well, I would not be surprised if the Rangers played better without Quinn behind the bench, and boy, did they! And it's not entirely fair to, you know. I guess bash Quinn after this performance, but it certainly won't make those, you know, complaints and I guess criticisms of Quinn go away after this one. So I, I think the, the approach was just keep it simple, you know, play for each other. And Hartford employs the same system as the Rangers do. So it's not too different. So this game basically from start to finish was something I've never seen. And so the goalie matchup was Carter Hart. uh, Sorry, not Carter Hart. Brian Elliott against Alex Georgiev. So Georgiev back in, and he's been struggling a lot lately. But tonight, he ends up getting a shutout. Wasn't tested too much, but made the saves he had to. And you hope that Georgiev can continue to play well like he did tonight, especially because it seems like Igor Shesterkin. We don't know when he's going to be back. Uh, To me, that could be really... A week from now, two weeks from now, we just don't know. And I think you know that while Georgiev struggled and Kincaid's had his moments, Georgiev is going to be relied upon to perform. So the first period, the Rangers get two goals. And Brendan Lemieux scores a second of the year. Beautiful pass by Adam Fox, making an impact right back into the lineup. And then the second goal was by Artemi Panarin, who, like I said, just is just unreal. On a good pass by Ryan Strump. So 2 nothing Rangers, and then the second period is when it happened. The second period, the Rangers would score seven goals. Yep, seven. And I guess we'll go goal by goal. So the first two would be by Pavel Buchnevich. And keep in mind, so Zibanejad, right, so Zibanejad, would get assists on both of these goals. He actually made a very nice play on the first one. He steals the puck, gets it to Buchnevich, and that makes it 4 nothing. And I don't remember if they pulled Elliott after the fourth goal or the fifth. Jacob Truba, I think it might have been after the fifth. Jacob Truba makes it 5 nothing, also on a pass from Zibanejad. So, you know, bad play. Brian Elliott certainly wasn't playing well, but the Rangers, I mean, Travis Sanheim and Philip Myers for the Flyers were both minus six. So these aren't even, this isn't like Ivan Provorov. I'm not sure where Sanheim and Myers slot in, but they're certainly not their top pair. So incredible that they go minus six. But so like I said, so at this point, Bujemic gets those two quick goals. Zibanejad at this point has three assists in the period already. And he wasn't done there. Zibanejad gets a shorthanded goal on a breakaway. Then 
he gets a power play goal on a great pass from Panarin, and then he would score an even strength goal. Hat trick for Zibanejad, six points in the period, which ties a record in the NH all time with six points in a period. And it's amazing. And you hope that this turns it around for him. Again, he has been a huge reason as to why, you know, the Rangers are at the halfway point right now. And he's a big reason why the Rangers haven't been winning more games. And wow, tonight, this is exactly, I mean, even more so than you'd hope for. But it kind of brings you back to last year where this guy was one of the best players in the whole league. So, and give Buchnevich credit too. Again, Pavel Buchnevich is, I think he has one less point than games played. I think he's played 27 games and has 26 points. Buchnevich has taken his game to another level. And that's great to see. He's really been tremendous this season. But like I said, Zibanejad, three goals, six points, natural hat trick. And again, one for the record books. And it kind of came out of nowhere, really. So... And the Rangers would add another one, and that would be Philip Heedle. Great pass by Libor Hayek. Lafreniere would get an assist. You know, we didn't see much in this outburst, you know, from Lafreniere and Kako. And that's disappointing. It definitely is. You know, definitely the damage came from the Kratos, Zibanejad, Buchnevich line, a little bit from Panarin and Strom, and the fourth line as well. Um, but I think, you know... He, Kako and Lafreniere, they, I think that they've been playing a lot better than the stat sheet would indicate. At the same time, you definitely want to see some more for them, and that'll be definitely something to look at in the second half of the season. But really, also in this game, the Rangers would win 9-0. There, there would be no goals in the third. The fans were chanting, you know, we want 10. And even NBC was messing around with the graphics where they were testing new things, and, you know, they would basically be using like nameplates if you want to call it for players and they were using zooming like way out so it was hard to see like i guess they figured it's a blowout let's just you know do a test run <laughs> but it was really remarkable and you know i thought keandre miller who really struggled in that first slot game like badly and you gotta remember no adam fox so a lot more you know for the defensemen to do in the uh, the first game, and I should also mention, Tarmo Reunanen made his debut in that first game, replacing Adam Fox. So Jack Johnson continues to be banged up. Uh, I'm not really sure what the deal is. They also placed him on waivers, so he's on the taxi squad now. Either way, whether he's banged up or not, they know that he's not an option, and that's great for the Rangers. And so Reunanen didn't play much, did get an assist on that first Panarin goal. So one game, one point. He would not play in tonight's game. And also, Gauthier was a scratch so those penalties did and he scored that goal but he did not play in this in this game so we'll see what happens for the games in washington but just a quick point on keandre miller i i felt like he had a really rough game in that first game with the flyers and really bounced back and was much better him and truba were excellent and the flyers really just couldn't do anything at all and i think if you're the flyers are now you really have to be wondering you know they might be that odd team out you know the way i see it you know, there's pretty much, you know, I don't include the Rangers in this mix. And I think it's, you know, five teams for four spots. And certainly, right, things can change very quickly, as we've seen. But for Philly right now, it's got to be concerning. And right now, they're looking like the weak link among those teams. So the Rangers are now headed to Washington to face a very hot Washington Capital team. And they are now in first place in the division. They have been really fantastic and kind of flying under the radar almost, too. And the Rangers are actually 2-0 and against the Capitals this year. So, you know, is the Washington hot streak going to continue? Or will the Rangers, I don't want to call it dominance against Washington, but they played two of their better games of the season against the Caps. So, we'll see. Was this kind of just a one-game explosion? Or can they use this? And also, the coaching staff. Uh, will David Quinn and the staff continue to be out? And, you know, I think... It's more for the fans as far as, you know, if the Rangers can do, continue to do well without Quinn, it's certainly going to feed into that narrative. So we'll see what happens with that. But, hey, exciting. Uh, and the Rangers kind of, and it makes sense, at the halfway point of the season, they're at NHL 500. So we'll see what the second half brings. And that starts at Washington this weekend.